Warning, the stunts in this movie were performed by professionals, so for your safety and the protection of those around you, do not attempt any of the stunts you're about to see. Hi guys, and welcome back to the channel, Machining with Joe. So, as you've seen in the last couple of videos, I've built this monstrous workshop. It's quite big, and it's at the back of my garden, which is a win-win. But at the minute, I'd say this is just a shed. It's got no power, no resource in it whatsoever, really. So today, we're going to be cracking on, getting all the electrics installed, and starting to make this thing a workshop. But before we do that, let's go over the sort of socket layout and why I'm putting the sockets where I am. So to do so, let's head over to CAD and we'll sort of look at the layout that I've planned on there. If we take a look at the CAD model I made then, way before I even started building this workshop, this is sort of the layout that I had planned right from the beginning. So the door is going to be sort of here where my cursor is and as you walk in you're going to be greeted with the milling machine and the lathe. Far at the back we've got the big bench and my toolbox and then sort of in the middle of the workshop we're going to have the smaller bench and bandsaw. So we've sort of got to work out where we're going to put power and what I'm thinking is the milling machine We've got the milling machine and the DRO, so that's going to be one socket. And in a future video, I want to add a power feed to this. So, we're going to have to have two sockets here. Next, I want a socket next to the lathe, so I can run the light. And also, a drop-down 16-amp socket, so I can run the inverter. So, I'm going to have, in total, three sockets along here. Along the big bench wall here, I'm thinking another three sockets, so I can plug plenty of accessories and charging devices into there and then as I go down I'm thinking two sockets either side of the small bench and then two sockets downhill for whatever I've got planned in this corner so that's the plan that's what the workshop's going to look like once everything's moved in and that's the sort of layout I want for my sockets so next thing to do now is start to get this installation started happy now then I know where everything is going to be going in the workshop Next thing really to do is start laying out the sockets on the wall. And may I just add a little disclaimer like you would have seen at the beginning of this video. This is no means uh, an expert's opinion. I can wire up a plug, I can wire up a socket, so this should be pretty straightforward. I've got three wires, what could go wrong? Famous last words. Before I start marking all the sockets out on the wall then, I just want to quickly go over the consumer unit that I'm using down here in the workshop. Um, so this is a three-way consumer unit designed for garages. I've already wired in the supply to it, although the supply is still isolated in the house. And basically what you've got here is, so sort of ignore the colours because this is just what I had. The grey wire here supply is our earth, the brown is our live and the black is our neutral. So with them we've got our supply coming into the consumer unit and going out we're going to be using the 32 amp RCD and the 6 amp RCD. So the 32 is going to be for our sockets and the 6 is going to be for our lighting circuit. And we're going to have a 16 spare in case I ever want to wire anything else in here. So if we find out the, the lathe is drawing too much power on the 32 circuit, I can always put it on a single 16 and separate it from the ring main that we're going to sort of be wiring in here. So. Now we've understood that, let's start laying out where we're going to put the sockets. I'm going to sort of draw uh, a level line going all the way around the building and then from there we can plop down our so sockets. I don't know if you can see that faint grey line there, but that now runs all the way around the workshop level and meets back up at the base of 
the consumer unit. We're now ready to screw the socket back boxes onto the walls where we want them. So just working out roughly where I want them now. And then after that, we're gonna start screwing them into positions. Before screwing these onto the wall then, I'm just gonna fit these 20 mil conduit joiners into the boxes. So that way, once I screw them onto the wall, they're basically ready to go with the conduit. So again, I'm using, because these are 20 mil conduit joiners, it only makes sense that I'm using 20 mil conduit as a rigid pipe. And that's gonna basically keep all the cables nice and tidy when attaching them around the workshop. First things first then, I'm gonna start with a socket over here. And just gotta work out how long conduit I want before I cut it. So I'm just putting the bottom of the socket, putting it on the line where it's gonna be. And then from there, I can work out roughly how long we want it. About 39 centimetres. Just quickly chop that and I shall be back. So just quickly do a dry fit before screwing this first socket into the wall. That goes on there. Got a bit of wiggle room there to line that up. And yeah, we're good to go. So that's our first conduit and socket back box all done. All that's left to do now is memory right around the workshop. There we have all our socket backboards screwed to the wall now. So these are all, um, which are like two plug 13 amp sockets. Apart from this bad boy down here, that's 230 volts, 16 amp. So that's gonna be the supply for the phase converter, which runs the lathe. So going all the way along, socket, 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 sockets. So I've still got to put the sort of, um, what do you call them? They're like clamps that go along this conduit here, just to support the long runs. But with all them installed now, I can start pulling all the cable through and cutting it roughly to length, ready to wire in the sockets themselves. Right then, we've got power in the workshop. I did rush ahead a little bit there and do a little bit off camera just because I wanted to test out the supply coming into the workshop. But I'm gonna share that with you now just so you sort of understand where I am and the process I'm going through next. So, let's take you over here. Right, we'll start, start up here at the consumer unit end. So before I do anything, I'm gonna isolate this. Right, isolated. So as you saw in the beginning of the video, we've got our supply here coming in, and this now is our load. So we've got the brown wire here, which is going into the RCD. Because this is the socket side, I'm using the 32 amp uh, RCD as it were. Up here we've got the neutral wire going to the neutral buzz bar, and over here we've got the earth going to the earth buzz bar. So this doesn't look that pretty at the minute because I haven't got any earth sheafing, but tomorrow I'm gonna bring along some earth sheafing and just sheaf that. So that's the sort of supply end at the consumer unit. And then we move down the conduit and in here we've got our lovely looking sockets. Again, I've got no earth sheafing yet, so ignore the fact that the earths aren't sheafed. But we've basically got our two lives here and our neutral here. So the reason we've got two here is because we've got one coming down from the consumer unit and then we're bridging it with this one, which is then going to the next circuit. So I'm gonna do this all the way along and in theory, this will create a sort of ring main going all the way around the workshop. So, so far I've only just done that one and the one side of that one because I didn't wanna leave anything live. 
now I'm gonna have to just go around and connect all these as I go. So it's gonna be a bit of a long job, gonna be in for a late night tonight, but gonna get all these connected up hopefully. And tomorrow when I come back, all I'll have to do is sheath that with the earth. And from there, I can sort of tidy it all up, put the sockets screwed on to the fascias and go from there. Right then, it's day two on the electrical install and I've come back today and I've sheathed all those earths and I'll quickly show you now. So the earth is all sheathed and we've got all the fascias on the back boxes now. And because I didn't want to do a wasted journey here, I've also brought over some bit more machinery. So got the Walco WM180 lathe. Next thing I want to do now is get the lights started. So I'm basically going to run some conduit out of here along to a switch on here. And then from there we're going to go up and install the lighting. So I've got four LED strip lights to fit and I've also got two square LED panels. Um, maybe I'll fit them. I'll see how the lighting situation is in here with the four LED strip lights in. All right then guys, we've now got power in here. So I can officially say this thing's a workshop. We've got all the lights set up now on a circuit. We've got our sockets around the edge on a sort of ring main. And yeah, we're going good, we're going good. So as you've probably seen on the community page, I've started moving stuff in here. And I've put the camera like this, so you can't actually see anything. But trust me, we've got the lathe, we've got the mill. We got it all going on. So, thank you for watching this video. In the next one, I think I'm gonna be at a point now where I can do a good workshop tour. So, that's exactly what we're gonna be doing in the next video. Showing you guys fully around the workshop once everything is moved in, and doing a sort of 2022 workshop tour. Something that I've not done since last year. So, this should be great to see how the workshop has progressed since last year, all the additional machinery we've got, and give you guys a sort of guided tour around the new place. So, hope you're all super excited for that.